is the matter of Curtis Carson, 23508A. All right, good morning. And so, Council, you're on here, please. Your Honor, John Goldport, P30758, on behalf of Mr. Carson. And so, your name, please. Carson Carson. Okay, so today's the date that we have scheduled for um, sentencing on your probation violation, as well as well, two probation violations and your jail review. So, where is your, den- your documentation from your dentist? Very good. Let me Thank see you what you have. Yes. Okay, well, I appreciate the, the pictures of the teeth, but I don't know how to read those. I mean, I'm not a dentist. Hopefully, it is. I'm not. hoping that there is some, something in writing they that I can holes. read. They circle where the hole is on my tooth on that first picture. If I recall correctly, your basis for testing positive for alcohol or your defense or your justification or um, reasoning or statement, whatever you would like to call it, was because you had to use alcohol-based mouthwash because of the hole in your tooth. Is that correct? No, it's not, I didn't say I had to. I said I did. I said that was the reason why I detected it, because I did I doubt I was the alcohol based on watch because of the whole lot. And I thought that I just had to prove to you the damage that was done on the side. No, 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 no. You're supposed to be bringing in to me wow. something from your dentist about what you were supposed to be doing well, for treatment born. of your of the hole in your tooth. Well, I wasn't born to this at the time. That's the reason why. My tooth, I have hold of my tooth for, for neglecting my my dental health. If I recall correct, when I lost when I lost my CDL due to the case in, in March, I was I lost my funds and all type of you know ways to even take care of myself. So that played a part into that. Your Honor. And I know this has been going on for quite a period of time. Uh, generally, so I recall uh, probably don't, that he indicated that he went to his dentist, but because of loss of, he didn't have any income at that time, he lost his medical uh, through his employment, that he was not able to have it taken care of. He spoke to his dentist way back when, uh, and then was, for lack of a better term, self medicating uh, because of the injuries and the pain until he was able to uh, get his teeth taken care of. Uh, it was that. Was why he did it. I, I thought, and I may be, and I agree that uh, you'd ask for some sort of documentation or doctor's notes from the uh, his physician or dentist uh, as to the damage and uh, and showing that he really did have a messed up health you know, exactly for a less life term. And it appears. That rather than getting something in writing uh, from Mr. Uh, from the, the dentist, that he has now gotten the X-rays from the doctor's office or dentist's office, and they have been highlighted. That's the documentation he has put in to show the condition and why he was. Well, I'm just yes. You know, All right, I'm seeing a picture of the tiny house. The teeth, and I didn't go to dental school, but I can tell that you have a wisdom tooth coming in somewhere right there, it looks like. Um, and then there's something circled yes. on a tooth. You see the lack of, if you compare the, that one to the other side, there's a lack of whitening right there, and that's where the hole is. That doesn't show me a hole. 
the surf, their surf will right where the, the where that that dark area is at. That's the hole. Because I in, insisted on actually showing you. You said no, I don't want to look at your mouth. Remember last time I said come in with the stop. Yeah, so I'm not looking directly in your mouth, but now I'm looking at your mouth. That's right. Yes. Okay. But, okay, this tells me these were printed on December 14th, but you didn't get the entries on December 14th. When did all this occur? I don't even show what date it all occurred. The day I went in there, I want to say it was a Tuesday. I forgot. I want to say it was, I don't know what day it was, but I got, I got them the same day that I went in there. I called them, and they're my dentist, and I said, uh, can I come December 4th. This is showing December 14th. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so just a few days ago. If you, if you mean okay, so. You just went in, to, you went in for the x-rays a few days ago? I, I went in and I, I talked to him and I said, is it okay if I come in and uh, I need these documentations before? And they said, come on, we can schedule a thing until like 2 or 3 o'clock. And I came in and they gave me a teeth white or clean. Your Honor, if you may recall, uh, we discussed when he was working, when he was available, and you said today's hearing, today's hearing init was initiated last week. Uh, when we're here. I understand that. And you said, since you're not working, get in there. Right. Which is about working on okay, so right. particular okay, but this is showing me, okay, here, sir, here's, you're trying to explain away your positive alcohol tests from October 16th, November 21st, you're failing to appear on December 6th. And what you're giving me, you're giving me something that's current. You're not giving me anything from those dates. From the dates? The dates I, I just stated. Are you are you saying that I was supposed to show you that my tooth was in that um, condition then? Because I didn't go then. That was the absence of me going, and there was no possible way for me to show you that that was the condition okay. of my tooth. How do I know how long? This hole has been there. I, 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 that, that is why you're supposed to be bringing me something in from your dentist, I didn't stating know something like that. I didn't know that you're not because last time we talked, no, 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 I'm talking just showing you that. Evidence. Oh, no, 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 yes. no. I was very, very clear. I wanted something from your dentist explaining what was going on. Because you were claiming that you needed to self-medicate, as you will, with alcohol-based alcohol-based mouthwash. So I was supposed to have been have received today something from your dentist stating what was going on with your tooth, whether or not um, alcohol-based mouthwash was something that was um, appropriate or not appropriate for treatment of that um, pending not having medication and if there was a way to determine how long this issue had been occurring. If I may, Your Honor, uh, that would have been very easy to do because I've been having this problem. They've been calling me, telling me, and I was, last time I spoke with this also, and you asked me why don't you just go get medication? And I said I was. I kept calling and I kept asking for antibiotics. And they said finally they were like, "Just come get your tooth took care of. We're not, we're not giving you no more antibiotics." Okay, so, so something in writing from your dentist saying how long you've been communicating with them about that is what I'm looking for. I mean, and I appreciate you brought me in something, but I'm not a dental professional. So I, other than seeing that you have something circled that. The, the lack of white could represent a hole. I don't know. And that you have a wisdom tooth coming in on one lower side. I don't know how else to read these. Um, well, I totally misunderstood you because I can easily provide that. They can tell you easily. Okay, good. Contact your dentist right now. Have them email it over and we'll recall this matter. All right. All right. Will you hand me my spitting box? Wow. All right, so we are going on the record in the matter of the City of Wyandotte versus Autumn Volchak 232479. Autumn Volchak 
for probation violation on 23739 and 23405. And counsel, your appearance, please. Yes, good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke appearing on behalf of my client. This time we extend to the matter being heard via Zoom. Ms. Bolchek, can you please unmute yourself and state your name for the record? Autumn Bolchek. All right, and um, are you staying scheduled for the pre trial and then probation violation? And counsel, let's handle the pre trial first, please. Yes, Your Honor. After having an opportunity to speak to the prosecutor, my client's going to tender a guilty plea to count two possession of paraphernalia with the understanding that the underlying possession of a controlled substance will be dismissed. Okay, um, I'm not sure who else is in there, but if they are here with you, you can close the door there, ma'am, so that there's not any background noise, please. Um, there's other people in this room. Oh, it's kind of a crowded room. So. There's kind of a bunch of different calls going on, but I can, I can mute it while... Um, well, if there's this conversation, I just need that to be stopped for a moment while we're on the record. Okay. All right, ma'am, please raise your right hand. Do you saw me swear from the top? No, the other right hand, please. Your right hand, please. Oh, sorry. You swear from the top. You're about to give me this going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. And you can you can lower your hand now. And may have you heard the plea that you're turning place in the on the record, correct? Yes, ma'am. And as to count two, which your attorney worked out a great deal given your, your history, ma'am. Count two, possession of drug paraphernalia. How do you plead? On my Asian side paraphernalia, um, uh, guilty, Your Honor. I'm sorry, I can you can is it you? Do you have a deputy in there with you, ma'am? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, deputy. Um, is there a way that is there a, is there another court matter going on in there, or is this they're just conversation? Um, if there's uh, one particular loud person in here, I'll uh, I'll handle that right now. Okay, thank you. Because it's my court recorder is at the beginning; it's really interrupting the record. Yeah. Okay. And so, ma'am, as to count two, possession of drug paraphernalia, how do you plead? Guilty, Your Honor. And you've gone over your advice of rights with your attorney, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And um, as to those rights, you understand all of them, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You also understand by entering into a plea that you'll be waiving some of those rights, specifically your trial and appellate rights. That's correct. And you've gone over your possible penalties as a result of your plea. Correct. And you also understand by entering into plea, it will affect the other matters that you're currently on probation for. Yes. Okay, I really need that person to stop talking, please. And there aren't any immigration issues, correct? No, you aren't. <laughs> and has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way to enter into a plea? No. All right, counsel, if you can please run to your client. I'd like to direct your attention back to December 1st, 2023. Were you in the city of Wyandotte? Yes. And at the time, you were currently on probation, correct? Yes. At some point, incident to a warrant, you were searched, and there was a, a pipe that was located on you for the purpose of using a narcotic. Is that correct? Yes. Satisfied, Your Honor. All right, the court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to the count two, dismiss count one for the plea agreement. And counsel, um, we can schedule this for sentencing or we can um, proceed with sentencing today, given the fact yeah. that your client was sentenced to probation and didn't even really comply. With we were going to ask for immediate sentencing. All right, and the court will 
<clears throat> note that Ms. Bolchak was arrested on December 4th. The court is familiar with Ms. Bolchak and um, the court will proceed with immediate, with immediate sentencing. And, um, but counsel, before we do the immediate sentencing, let's handle the probation violation as well. And Ms. Bolchak, you're still under oath and uh, violation on 23739 alleges that Ms. Bolchek failed to attend her probation instructional on June 15th and then again on June 22nd. And <clears throat> then that's for her plea on the loitering where drugs are kept, used or sold in possession of controlled substance. And also on 23405, she failed to attend a probation visit on June 15th, failed to register weekend drug testing as ordered, failed to comply with any conditions of probation. And that's on her plea on possession of drug paraphernalia. And counsel, what is your honor? <laughs> yes, Judge, at this time we were going to be hoping that uh, each one of these matters could be held concurrent. I saw the recommendations and we are prepared to proceed. Okay, and Ms. Bolchak, you're still on your oath and asked to those violations that were alleged. How do you plead? Guilty. And you've gone over your advice of rights regarding probation violation purposes, correct? Yes. Is that yes? Yes. And knowing all, and you understand all those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And you also understand by entering into a plea that you'll be waiving some of those rights, specifically your right to a contested hearing? Yes, Your Honor. And knowing all that, do you still want to continue with your plea? Yes, Your Honor. And you also understand the possible penalty in this matter, and the recommendation is for under advisement status to be revoked, probation to be revoked, and 60 days jail. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And <clears throat> knowing all that, ma'am, do you still want to continue with your plea? Yes. Has anybody promised or anything threatened you or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. no. All right, counsel, you can please pardon your client. Yes, I'd like to direct your attention to June 15th, 2023 and June 22nd, 2003. Did you fail to appear for a probationary instruction? Yes. And additionally, while on probation, you did accrue a new charge, correct? Yes. Satisfied, Your Honor. The court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, factually accurate. The court will accept your plea <clears throat> to the probation violations and to be guilty based upon your I'm sorry, enter a probation violation based upon your plea of guilty, and that would be technical violations one, two, three, four, and five. And counsel? Your Honor, I saw the recommendation for 60 days jail. I asked that my client get credit for the time that she's been in since December 1st. I'd ask that uh, it run concurrent with the admonishment that she's received from the charge that she just took a plea on. And then furthermore, she did ask that uh, during this time in custody, if possible, she would like the opportunity to be tethered to treatment. Thank you, Judge. All right, Ms. Bojack, did you request um, to be tethered to, treat, to treatment while you've been on bond? Yes, um, just to try to um, have time. I mean, I don't think I personally need treatment, but um, I know that that was something that I asked for when I first got arrested. So um, I'll, I'll do the days. Um, I'll do whatever it takes, but I just... I really just want to uh, get home. Okay, ma'am. Let me ask you a couple questions. Number one, if you don't think you need treatment, why did you ask to go to treatment? Um, I was trying to uh, have like the days made up. I don't know if it. I don't really know. Because <laughs> it. it, it Ma'am, you asked for treatment. So why did you ask for treatment? Uh, jail. I'm sorry. Um, to not have jail time. Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. So, and you don't think you need treatment, given your given given what's been going on with you the last year, you don't think you need treatment. Honestly, no. I really found myself in here. Um, I've been spending time with myself. Um. I don't know, I just, 
I don't feel like I need a, a, a guy or anything. I, I don't know. I just, just want to uh, get going on life. <laughs> Well, man, the way you've been going on life, not a great start. How old are you? 25. 25. And now you have three drug-related convictions. Three. You're under advice and status is revoked. You had an opportunity to not have your possession charge on your record, and you didn't do a darn thing with probation. Not at all. You just ghosted us. I know. I just I know. if I get probation this time, I, I I told myself like you know it would be at least six months. That that's all I would really need to get like clean and I, you know by summertime I'd be you know working. I I really want to get a car. Um, but aside from the job thing, just you know. I want to draw and make music and I don't know I just want to do things for myself and I don't I like coffee again um, I don't know just things I, I've been drinking a lot of water and there's just a lot of things I was doing before that like I've been doing since I've been in here um so I haven't hey, been ma'am, ma'am, part part of the part of the concern, right, is when you get out, how are you going to continue to do stuff? Right? That's part of what treatment is. And you don't think you need treatment. So I've, I've been the court treatment treatment seven times. times. I've been to treatment like seven times. I really I just I don't know. I know I know how to work the program. I know to go to a meeting when I need to. I need I know there's just different kinds. I know. So you go through the motion. You go through the motions. So you just go through the motions. You don't really receive what it is that you're getting. I really think I've learned a different way I've been incarcerated this time. Yeah. Um, it's. I, I don't know. It's just, it feels different. It feels really different. I'm probation. Judge, we're ready to uh, hear the sentencing. Uh, we are ready to proceed, Judge. Yes, no, man, you're not getting probation. I can tell you that much. The court's going to uh, 23405. The court's going to adopt the recommendation, revoke probation, close the case, not improvement, $50 probation violation, fees, 60 days jail. On um, 23739, the court's going to adopt the recommendation. Your under advisement status is revoked. Your probation is revoked. $50 probation violation fee, 60 days jail. The court will know that that will be served concurrent. Um, and then the court's going to also order on um, 232479, the court's going to order 93 days jail. <laughs> Credit for your 15 days. That's consecutive with 23739 and 23405. And we'll spend your fines and costs on that on this matter. What? Any questions, counsel? No, Your Honor. Any questions, ma'am? So, uh, how, how many days? Well, 60 on your probation violations plus 93 plus 15. So, that's going to be, I can tell you exactly what that is, ma'am. Is there any way I could do treatment? 138 days. Is there any way I could do treatment? Yeah, you, you told this court you don't need treatment. Okay, I I I, I uh, no, you just you told this court the only reason you said that is because you don't want to do the jail time. No, that's so, not you do the jail time. Ma'am, I I'll do treatment. I quite frankly, ma'am, with your um lengthy warrant status and you're absconding from probation, I'm not sure that you would not abscond from from your treatment. Provider. Ma'am, I really, I can't, I can't do 130 days. Yeah, you said you didn't need treatment. 
I, I need help with housing when I get out of here. I need to the need. I'm sorry. Any help with housing when I leave here? Um, you know, I, I have my. Okay, I, I need that talking in the background to please stop. Somebody. Else. My record is a, my court recorders indicated our record is a mess because of all the talking in the background. And what was that, Ms. Bolchak? Hey, I really don't. I I think I need treatment instead. I. Yeah, you're very clear. You've been to treatment seven times, and you don't need treatment anymore. No, I I do. You don't have to the program. No, I I I got a little ahead of myself. I that that's what I asked for when I first came in. Um, because I do have a drug judge potentially, uh, judge, I know that potentially she might be asking for some sort of mental health treatment, but I understand the stock, it does need to be moved along. So if necessary, uh, we have to have the matter recalled later in the morning to potentially have it reevaluated, but I understand the docket does need to move along, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Ms. Bolchak, I'm not ordering treatment for you at this point. Because you stated that you don't need treatment and you only asked for it so that you didn't have to do jail time. Given that and the fact that you have absconded from probation with this court, the court has determined that you're not going to abscond from treatment. So at this point, 138 days is what you're going to serve, ma'am. We're all done. Thank you. Off the record. Have a good day. Off the record. Twenty-two four one two two seven is called. This uh, is a an indictment, and it alleges that Joe Lee Low is that you? Yes. Uh, committed the state jail felony of uh, forgery which it carries with it up to two years in the state jail if uh, convicted. And it's a felony, so it's serious. Are you getting a lawyer? I'll try to um, just can't afford to look that up. Well, they come in handy when you're charged with a crime. Yeah. Uh, are you employed somewhere? Yeah. Where? I work at a gay room provider. Okay. So uh, how much do you make? An hour? Or do you get paid an hour or it's a salary? Or... Uh, I can pay $10 an hour. Sir, ma'am? $10 an hour. How long awesome. have you worked there? Uh, a year and a half. This is odd. Yeah. Uh, who's got this case? I do. Just... <laughs> you see anything odd about this? Dates? Dates wise. He was indicted one year ago. This is an initial appearance. Yeah, We're nations have been to court a couple of times. I've been to court once. Nations have been to court once. I got called and I asked him to sign me one, but I never heard that from I didn't print out all the three days for the I'm sorry. You want to pay full price for Erica? <laughs> you just won't do it. Okay, you posted a bond a year ago. Exactly. Like right. December 16th of last year mm -hmm. for $5,000. And it's, it's this has been re been on a PR bond. The defendant called and gave new address, and it's in parenthesis again. Now, I, I get the end. Let me speak. Okay. Um, then you can speak uh, again, which is kind of that. Uh, it, it's a hint to me that the way they wrote that, that you're moving around. You have another affidavit. Oops, second. It's reset until 323 for designating. Attorney. Have you ever had an attorney? No. To hire an attorney? Here it is. It's a March to hire a lawyer. Then 
send notice to people on bonds. You been in jail in another county? Mm -hmm. What county were you in jail? Harding? Harding County. I'm in jail in Harding. I was at Knox. Okay. When it's 24. For what? For what? Um, the, uh, section and, uh, the bears. What's the status of that case? Uh, they said I advocated uh, taking the charges, so I just have to go to court and for that. I, you're mumbling. I didn't hear you. Say to wait and go to court for that because the people I was with, uh, they signed after they were taking the charge because I had nothing to do with it. And so I'm just waiting to go on that. I go to court on that next month on the 16th. She's saying the co-defendants. I know. But she's speaking the street. It, it's just it, the, the, the way, the manner you speak, it's, it's the way people speak who are living off the grid and who are not following the rules and or the outliers and who end up in this court because nobody people don't speak like that normally you you're using street slang and with that we recognize here because the people who are here use that and that's why you're here is is that's kind of you're free falling you need to fix that so You've got something in Hardin County, a drug case in Hardin County that's pending right now. Yeah. You got this forgery case here. What do you have in Orange County? Nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. Are you still living in Orange County? Yes, I live in Byron. At 990? Yes. Okay. Miss Mantellini, yes, sir. I'm going to ask you to help uh Miss Lowe here. I'm going to point you. She's got a couple of indigent poems and from what she said, I don't think her income has changed. So I'm going to appoint you to represent her, please. And I'm adding and, her to discovery right now, Judge. Oh, uh, I'm adding her to discovery right now. Oh, well, Merry Christmas! It's a gift uh, for you. Uh, she's charged with the stage of felony forgery. Was there a restitution in this? A loss? Let me check, Judge. <laughs> Uh, it, it, they didn't they didn't you didn't get money out of this it looks like according to this it was attempted and it was and, and the, it was attempted to be passed according to the probable cause affidavits there's a restitution request from the victim although i may need to verify so whether they actually not have permission to cash any check or attempted to pass a fraudulent check and in doing so attempted to fraud a place of business which was placed in handcuffs Placed in the back. Well, did it state the check amount in the probable cause, Judge? Seven eighty six thirty nine. Okay, so I got to figure out. Was attempting to cash a forged check. We have a rest uh, restitution request for twenty three hundred dollars. Um, so I, I'll have to look through the file and figure out where that comes from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the check on its face is seven hundred. So sometimes they'll they'll just file one. How, what is it? How much was it? Twenty three hundred and eighty three dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they'll just file on one and there'll be other checks uh, that the victim will uh, assert for restitution. All right. What we're going to do is reset this uh, for four weeks. Yes, okay. Ma Ms. Mantellini will be appointed to represent you. She'll be talking to you. We'll get a resetting before you leave. You have a seat in the uh, dugout here. And we'll, we've got a... Joe Lee Love. Come on up. You plunked your drug test. Let me just, let, let me tell you, before we even start, the court has dealt with the Adderall prescription yeah. issue before. And uh, I was able to uh, get a lot of people in trouble off of that because uh, some people are getting prescriptions and are uh, not properly administering the prescriptions and using them. If she has a um, prescription, uh, and we found this out of Louisiana, is where it's out of control. And they tried to pull that on me, and we were able to sniff it out. And the Adderall had they show me a bottle with that which has pills in it but the bottle it, there there's just un, unlimited adderall where you can store it and and the prescription labels don't match up to what the facts are uh, and 
everybody knows that Adderall is being used as methamphetamine substitute. And I know that. So you're not going to pull the wool over this court. So one thing we're going to we're going to interrupt you just one second. She does need you to know that she did just get out of a hospital. I'm on nine different minutes. And she's on them. And she was allowed to at least text her sister. You could maybe take a picture of her. Ma'am, you you ma you're free falling in this in life right now. Look at you. where are you working? I work at Game Room with Biter. I know, but you're, you're you're I have an appointed lawyer. I'm sorry. You have a court appointed lawyer. I just you can't even fire. You can't even fire to. somebody. You're free falling. You're not so. You're not independent. Yes, I am. I really am. You're, well, the the people are paying her. Okay. Yeah, for you, fine. for your mess, the people are. Don't say you're independent. Okay. You want? Are you going to agree with me? Thank you. Of course, that's correct. Um, you can go. All right. You go f hire your own lawyer. I can. I didn't know. Why I didn't you do that? Why? I didn't have time to do it. I was in. Then okay. here's what we're going to do on that one. On this, you're going to pay the court appointed attorney's fees as a condition of probation. If you can do it, that's that's what we'll do because the people aren't going to be paying for uh, others' mistakes. That's not right unless they're indigent. But the Adderall thing has been pulled in front of me, and we've pulled that. We we've been able to sniff out problems in it not always but i'm going to uh, make sure that we're going to walk this through that you have legitimate uh, prescriptions because this game that's played we caught some people on um, try uh misusing uh adderall as prescription and testing positive in meth and being able to sashay out of here thinking that they pulled the wool i'm sorry you're shaking your head no, but it you weren't here when that happened. I I well, I'm well, not, I'm quit shaking not. your head when I'm speaking. Uh, Do you have a problem? That no. a muscular problem? Well, well, no. quit shaking your head when I'm speaking because it's true what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can disagree with it, but um, but I don't need you. To, I it wouldn't it won't matter whether you disagree or not. I I'm talking history and facts. But we're going to, uh, until you can show me a prescription that uh, oh, it has the picture of a prescription on her phone, I want to see it in person. I want to see it actual. Okay. I can get her. This, <laughs> ben, let me ask you, you got the photograph on the phone. What is that? The get out of jail free card mm -hmm. thing that you got? You know, by suggesting that maybe we could get a picture of her prescription Okay. So that we would have them to give to the court. Now I got to see it. Now I got to count the pills and everything else. Let's see what the dates are. We should be able to. We should be able to bring it to the court. Yeah, because that's what people are doing. They're getting the Adderall prescriptions and then storing them for for just this purpose. We've had it. And okay. It's really and the people. There's people from Louisiana who we caught doing that. Some some people who somehow figured out how to get out of jail free on the methamphetamine use. So she says that her sister, when she gets up at two, would be able to bring the court uh, the, that prescription and possibly the judge could hold her until after two when her sister might could get here. I unfortunately will not be able to be here because I have a pre-existing engagement at three o'clock that I must attend out of in the okay. needlement area. <laughs> But I hate for her to go to jail if she is, in fact, being treated uh, with a legal prescription. I see that she has you need swollen to be, in her face. You need to be carrying it around okay. for this purpose. You just can't. I'm sorry, a photograph from somebody else is just not going to be believable. You've got to have it in person when it's a controlled substance that carries with it a, a, a second degree felon. Sure, they get stolen, ma'am. I'm scared like my prescription is gonna get stolen because I get I have pain medicines too, and I don't, I don't carry them around for that reason. It's happening. Do you, what, what, do you carry money? Yeah, you're not afraid that's gonna get stolen. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, let's see, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. oh. right. Well, then that's that's the court's orders you're in custody your bond is revoked and until such time that you can uh, show me the bottle uh that i can check up on and resolve in your favor so, um would the court allow her to make one last 
call to her sister to tell her sister she needs to come up there with that. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it, but work that out with the, with the bailiffs. Thank you. That prescription she's got, did you see a picture of it? Is no, it out of Louisiana? No, I just asked her to maybe get somebody to send something so that it could be provided to the drug tester or the court. Yeah, we figured out there's like a seminar going on out out there with the methamphetamine users is this is what you did. I mean, that's what they get together. And they said, this is how we can beat them. They're always looking for ways to do that. But it's really bad in Louisiana because of the way they, the way they dispense things differently. And one of the druggists, I was talking to a pharmacist here and they said, yeah, in Louisiana, it's, it's a loophole that they're not fixing. We, we do have the, we do have it fixed here. Well, custody hearing over in Orange this morning regarding set up for Christmas. Okay, but yeah. that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. It was, Your uh, Honor, um, regarding Miss Lowe, I don't know whether I can leave or if I need okay. to wait. I'm not yeah. sure what I need to do. Um, she's hoping that her sister could bring her medication proof, but, but doesn't get off until two, and so I guess I'm going to leave for now and. If I need to return, it would have to be sometime probably after 345. I'd be in Nederland probably finished in that area around 345 if everything goes smoothly. We have this afternoon, right? Yes, sir. Well, we'll be around. Okay, so you want to call me if you need me to come back? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Your Honor. And I'll go just let her know. Okay. Okay. Can I pose you? Okay, what we're going to do, come on. What we're going to do is release you, get you back on that status you were in you need to come back on thursday and bring all the material uh, on that adderall prescription you understand yeah at nine o'clock come on in ma'am everything, everything you can okay. to convince me that it's not a ruse okay Where, where's the doctor who gives that to you is he in orange or he's in beaumont beaumont it's okay. Uh -huh, that's okay. Okay, we're going to release her, and she's back on her nor the bond she was before. All right, we are going back on the record matter of Curtis Carson, 23508. Your Honor, John Holcroft, on behalf of Mr. Carson, name on the record. Carson. Oh, okay. And so we um, have taken a pause on this matter. So that Mr. Carson could contact his dentist, and um, Mr. Carson went to his dentist, and um, there are two um, spots that are circled. One on June first of twenty twenty one, where it looks as though it's Motrin and amoxicillin that was prescribed, correct? Yeah. And then again in 2022, September, October, and December. I have no idea what number 31 means because the x rays don't have a teeth number. So I don't know what that means. Um, so you were in Colorado in October of 2022. And um, they sent your prescriptions to that pharmacy. You're going to follow up in the office when you're back in town. It doesn't say you went back in the office because the next thing that shows December 30th of 2022. And your upper tooth is bothering you. You know, you need CT or EXT. I don't know what that means. Canal or extraction, I don't know. Oh, you mean root canal and or extraction? Well, extraction. One or the other. That's what they keep telling me. Right. Okay. And I'm, I don't know. I've never even had a cavity, so I have no idea. Yeah, what you do. Dr. Ismail said it was okay just one last time. Then Curtis needs to be seen in office. And then there's nothing else until last week. Sir, I don't doubt that you have tooth pain. Or you, I mean, 
But again, I'm not really clear as to why utilizing mouthwash with alcohol was helpful. So, because anytime like, any bacteria gets in it, it gets reaffected. And that's the only time that when I'm not feeling any pain is when I'm making sure I'm cleansing it, cleansing it, cleansing it. And right, there's non alcohol based mouthwash. There is, but I was just accustomed to using what worked for me. So, well, sir, you were, you were told at the beginning of your probation that you would have to change some of your personal items because you couldn't use alcohol based personal items. I understand your arms, but that pain is something that's excruciating. You know, I was thinking about nothing but trying to just do whatever you can do to avoid that pain. You don't want the bacteria in there. And like it's it's the worst pain ever. It's worse than it needs a headache, a stomach ache, a backache. It's probably toothache and backache, probably you know, top two pain. Um, and and clearly he's never he's, he's never uh, been pregnant. So like, that's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying. And <laughs> so, the, the nerves are in your head, the actual head. So it's like your whole head hurts. Well, it's like that. I'm working two jobs and now. I got a morning shift job and a night shift job. So I understand you went to a lot of effort to get this paperwork, but at the end of the day, you're on probation for opera physically impaired. These are technical violations four, five, and six. You test the positive for alcohol October 16th, November 21st. And then you failed to appear for your testing on November 6th. And this court had sentenced you to 45 days jail also, is a jail review October 2nd. And then in the interim, within your jail reviews, there's been probation violations. And I mean, the purpose of the court's orders are for the court's orders to be followed. I don't want to like to just kind of have a recording because you did give me a, a blessing on being able to provide these things to record in order to, you know, in my defense. Um, I don't want to, um, you know, like I said, everything, everything that I said last time to where you blessed me with the opportunity to do so. But now, if I recall correctly, um, that's, that's why we are where we are today. Is because you give me a chance to show you that I'm making uh, you know better efforts, progress, and you know, I'm putting the alcohol center so I can show you that I'm that I'm not that I don't have a problem with sobriety, and um, and also at the beginning those violations that I got at the beginning was really um, out of my character to. Back that I was I had just lost my job and I lost my CEO and I was depressed and all that other stuff that I said I don't want to irritate. And um, I'm just I'm not the person who I was when that happened March 30th or March whatever that was that I to, I've been humble enough to accept that okay I'm not going to be on the road so okay I'm going to go get a pizza job or now I know I got a hundred dollar job but I also now I got a factory job at Hearn at Hearn. Yeah, Ern and Taylor worked there from six to two thirty, and I moved to my my hundred dollar job from four to eleven thirty to five to one. Um, at first, I wasn't humble enough to accept anything less than what I was doing because I worked so hard to get to that point. So I, I thought like, life was over. Like I do everything the way I didn't, I didn't care at the beginning, um, and I wasn't really had the knowledge of really like what was going on because I didn't care to really know because I was just, and then I had the accident right closely too. So I was all on medication and I was down and, you know, those first couple of, uh, I think there were no peers were because I just was out of, out of it and I just didn't care about life at the time. And I'm just, uh, I know it looks horrible on paper because all you, your job is just to look at it. You know <clears throat> where I violated that, but um, I think that it's a vast difference between that period of time and this stretch here. But all collectively, I know it looks horrible paper, but I just feel like one more time, I 
we felt the need to, you know, uh, elaborate the difference in those situations. And I was just asking you to just look at the situationally and uh, the human element of everything. And I'm on the right path, but like, I never worked too job in my life. Um, situation, but compared to everything that I've done in my life, this is probably the best, most behaved I've been. I'm not doing none of the things that I used to do. Well, I would say that I will give you that, sir, based upon your previous history, correct? All right. Could I suggest that I know we've gone through this. It has gone, you know, took some time, but uh, he has gone to great steps to show why, what was going through his head physically. Uh, <clears throat> it was a, uh, I guess I'm asking for leanness on his part as well, as he is also. If we could adjourn this. I'd say I'm pretty lenient. I, I know. And so being supervisory in nature. I understand, John. I'm not saying you have just the opposite. I believe uh, you have been more than lean, but we're asking for some more. And, and that's all I can say. More than lenient. I don't think I've ever been called more than lenient, but okay. Well, well Your Honor, I don't know. I don't know if there is such a word as most lenient or more than lenient, but that's what we're asking at this point in time. Uh, as he's indicated, he's now working two jobs. He has, he has uh, payments that he has to be making to uh, finalize this matter. Uh, I know that there's been some orders even before I was involved regarding the, the jail reviews. Uh, I guess, Your Honor, I'm asking again if we could adjourn this matter for 60 days or whatever the court may feel. Just asking. No, I can't keep adjourning here. Here's what I am um, going to do. Because there were two positive alcohol tests and one misdrug test. All while the jail review is pending. So, the recommendation is to revoke probation. So, the court's going to revoke probation. The court's going to also order a $50 probation violation fee on each of the two violations. The court's going to order the following. And what is he's on an alcohol tether as well. I, yeah. I and sir, what um what is your schedule? Oh. <clears throat> I'm off Mondays and Tuesdays at my hundred dollar job. No more Saturdays and Sundays at home. Okay. I wish that Wayne County Jail still had the weekend pro the weekend jail. Okay. Or the work release, even. Yes, they don't, they don't, don't have that either. They don't have work release, they don't have the Wayne County the weekend jail anymore. Well, I don't. I don't think that they've. The court consider uh, probation and as a term and condition continuing rather than <clears throat> incarceration. Uh, give him sixty days continuous on the tether. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Well, Mr. Carson is going to serve some jail time. I'm going to give you some time to notify your employer to request some time off. In the interim, you're going to keep the alcohol tether on. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to order. So right now you're looking at 65 days jail. 30 days jail review, 15 days for the technical violations, four and five. 20 days is the recommended time for technical violation number six. So I'm going to do is I'm going to have you serve 21 days. I'm going to give you time to report. So you can. I'm going to lose the job. So I'm not going to give you the job. I'm going to lose the job. That's a long time. To do the you know, yeah. Sir, you don't have days off. You, don't, you can't notify your employer that you're going to not be at work for three weeks. Three weeks. 
I, listen, let me, let me just tell you, I'm going to give you a few weeks to report. So it gives you time to communicate with your employer so that you can secure your job upon your release. I appreciate that. You know, I just don't want to bounce it there. Well, you're not going to know until you ask your employer. But in the interim, you're going to keep the alcohol tether on. That would confirm that you're not pursuing any alcohol. So I will give you until January 19th to report. So it gives you five weeks, four and a half weeks to make those arrangements with your employer. You're to maintain the alcohol tether until you report 30, 32 days on the alcohol tether. I'm sorry, Your Honor, could you repeat that? 32 days on the alcohol tether. The adultery the, the um, to the drug tests. I heard there's been a time where since the last time where I failed to, they changed my color, decreased my color. So maybe they had thought that I was black was supposed to go and I didn't go on black and go on green. Okay, but that was after that was after November 22nd because the, but the drug test that shows you did before was November 6th. You're talking about the one that I that I showed up for, but I didn't have the money to, to drop for. It. I remember we discussed that one too. No, I understand. Okay. I understand. But sir, just so you're aware, um, the biggest component for my decision is the two positive alcohol tests. Yeah, so I thought these were just going to resolve these problems, Your Honor. Well, sir, you you showed me that you had an issue with your two with your tooth. But what you showed me was from a year ago. You didn't go in and do anything in the interim. Exactly. And you also, this is the first time, even on your other pods of alcohol tests, that you indicated it was mouthwash. And so, we've been I, showing, I've said that multiple times, Your Honor. Okay. About these violations, yes, not your other violations. And so, I've taken a lot of time and consideration in your matter, sir. I've given you an opportunity to present your evidence that you'd like the court to review. I reviewed all of it, including your dental x-rays, which I can say I've never done before. And um, so the court, that is the order of the court. So you're going to serve 21 days jail. I'm giving you until January 19th to report. And until then, you're going to continue on the alcohol tether, and that'll be 32 days. And um, do a payment plan, or are we uh, washing plans are being limited? The the probation violation fees are being added to his uh, balance cost. Okay. Okay. So he we have he has to pay off the cost of fines as well as the probation violations, and he will That's be right. Pardon? I'm not into my violations. Uh, according to this, it, it says about fourteen hundred. It is too annoying. So he will uh, remain on the alcohol tether for till the nineteenth, which is thirty days, or thirty-two days, I believe you said. And then he will do twenty-one days in a jail. Is that correct? Yes. He needs to report on the nineteenth of January. Yes. Do you have any questions? Uh, I'm going to appreciate you uh, evaluating this thing, but it's probably awesome. These 20 days, probably not, but ultimately, you'll be monitoring. Maybe you've got a month. Okay, and sir, let me just let me just tell you this. I don't pass these judgments lightly. I don't pass these sentences lightly. I take all that into consideration, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you are aware as to what you can and cannot put into your system. You are aware of the consequences if that occurs. This isn't as though as your first and second violation. These are four, five, and six. And even if you take out the missed test, it's still four and five. So if you lose your job, sir, 
That's unfortunate, but I'm also doing everything I can to give you time to make arrangements with your employer so that you may maintain your job. There's only so much that I can do. I'm not the one that had these issues. I just wish that you guys could look at the numbers and see how so I, I did, sir. I just said I didn't take this lightly. I looked at everything, including your x rays. I, I looked at everything. Shall we go around to probation? Now? Yes, yes, thank you. Mr. Carson, I know that you've done a much better job of where you were, and so um, I don't discount any of that. And I hope that that continues when this is all resolved. Okay. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. You have got to be kidding me. What? What is going on today? This is, this is a joke. This is a joke. The day is a joke. He needs an interpreter. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself sometimes. Oh my God, sir, put that cigarette out. I don't give a crap that you are outside of this. What is wrong with everybody today? You know what, Miss Green, we're going to start bringing people in person. People are going to learn how to act in a courtroom. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Man. Can you hear it? No, I know. Don't give up. Okay. Uh, I have no, no faith in that. Trust me, at the end of the day, I'm going to be here. I'm the one that needs to drink.